Well, let's begin. Uh, in our module one, we're going to look at the clinical aspects of cardiac masses. Um, typically, when we look at the epidemiology occurrence and tumor type, we like to first differentiate it between the adult tumor populations versus pediatrics because they are quite different. So we're going to start with the adult tumor types. Primary cardiac tumor, unfortunately, is very rare because the malignant types are uh, pretty poor in prognosis. And uh, if you look at the prevalence in the population, this is as uh, low as 0.002 to 0.3%. In adult, uh, majority of the cardiac tumor discovered, about three quarter of B9 in origin. Doesn't mean that they would not cause a symptom or sometimes even devastating symptoms such as stroke. Um, here, B9 only means that it doesn't grow in the cancerous fashions. 25% do have malignant potentials, um, so we'll discuss that as well. Now, the most common benign type of um, cardiac tumor in adults is myxoma, and the most common malignant type tumor, cardiac tumor, is sarcoma, especially angiosarcoma. Now, metastatic disease of the heart is about 40 times to 100 times more common than primary tumor. So, if you see a cardiac tumor and if you discern some malignant uh, behavior, such as aggressiveness, um, and metastatic disease, then you really should think about metastatic disease first before you plow into uh, primary cardiac tumor. And finally, uh, pseudotumor are all type, either by um, limitations on imaging or uh, caused by uh, misinterpretation of normal cardiac structure is a significant confounder. Now, in the pediatric side, at this age under 18, the primary tumor prevalence, again, is very low, 0.0017 to 0.28%, which is roughly the range of the adult side. There is about a 0.14% of fetal incidence, primarily that came from uh, rhabdomyomas, uh, uh, say, uh, fetal tumor. In children, unfortunately, 90% of the tumor found are benign and about 10% are malignant. The most common benign tumor uh, in children is rhabdomyomas and fibroma. The most common malignant tumor is, again, sarcoma, especially rhabdomyosarcoma. Metastatic disease of the heart is about 10 to 20 times more common. So similar to adult, if you see a tumor in the heart, the first thing you really need to think about is uh, potential metastatic disease. Now, um, I'm going to give you two charts, primarily for references. Um, the first chart here talks about adult uh, disease and the frequencies. So as I said earlier, from the benign tumor type, the myxoma is the most common, followed by the bipapillary fibroblastoma, lipoma, and uh, sporadic hemangiomas. In the malignant type, fortunately, they are pretty rare. Still, the most common one is angiosarcoma, followed by various other types of um, sarcoma, and then primary lymphoma of the heart. Now, um, the tumor, for most tumor, it can grow anywhere. Uh, but for certain tumor, it tends to occur in a particular place. So locality of a tumor as discerned by imaging, either by echo, MR, CT, is an important piece of information. Um, for example, in the right ventricle, uh, we could see thrombus, which we can see probably just about every chamber. Metastatic disease, again, we can see it pretty much in every chamber. But lipoma tend to be in the ventricle side. So the RV and the LV are the ones that had the lipoma uh, identified here. In the pericardium, we have various tumor, including metastatic disease, um, cyst, uh, formation of the pericardial cyst. In the right atrium, a nuclear here is myxoma, and myxoma can be mostly in the left side, but also can be on the right side. And then on the valve, the most important one is the papillary fibroblastoma. The benign tumor uh, that occur in the valve will be something like a thrombus or vegetations. Similarly, here's a chart for the pediatric side. The pediatric epidemiology data is less well published. Uh, we do know that rhabdomyoma is the most dominant one. I picked out a series that came from a um, medium-sized uh, clinical uh, study uh, that based on 78 cases, they reported 18% incidence. But I think um, for most people who experience uh, cardiac tumor uh, imaging, we'll say that rhabdomyoma probably is the top of the list fibroma, and then teratoma for children. And then in the malignant side, rhabdomyosarcoma is the more common one. Fortunately, they are very rare, so it's not a common entity. So similarly, I draw for you the map uh, for uh, various pediatric tumors. Here, there are a couple of new entities. Purkinje cell tumor happens uh, quite often in the septum um, of the ventricle. 
Um, we do have teratoma. Quite often that can occur in the pericardial space. Now, there are a couple of tumors that have syndromic association. So if you shouldn't know the syndrome is going on, it's probably good bets that you might have cardiac involvement. The common one that we all think about are tuberous sclerosis and in the cardiac involvement will be rhabdomyomas and multiple rhabdomyomas at birth. Um, there is a more, uh, less, co there's a less common a known syndrome called a Carney syndrome. It's a uh, cutaneous neural uh, crest um, uh, disease or disorder. And this Carney syndrome can produce uh, multiple pediatric uh, myxoma. Um, so myxoma typically is solitary, but in this particular syndrome, they can be multiple. And the occurrence of primary cardiac lymphoma is extremely rare, except in immunocompromised individuals, especially those with HIV uh, infection. Now, the role of MRI and CT in cardiac mass evaluations um, really is to decide the following. Um, the goal is to differentiate mass versus no mass. Typically, um, a CT and MR imager such as myself will get referral for a case uh, where the patient on an echocardiogram had incidentally found a mass. And then our job is to confirm that mass truly exists. Then we have to decide whether that mass is a true mass or is it a pseudo mass that's confirmed by some other normal anatomic structures. We use imaging to differentiate short solid versus cystic uh, lesions. Some of the more simple cystic lesions tend to be congenital in origins, such as the pericardial cyst. The differentiations for mass versus thrombus, this is an important point because uh, we will not try to be aggressively uh, managed by surgical anatomy if we can firmly say that it is a thrombus and with the appropriate therapy with the anticoagulations. Um, we use CT and MR to differentiate solitary versus multiple masses. Uh, CT and MR tend to do a better job for echo because we can see every aspect of the heart, including great vessels coming in and out of the hearts fairly clearly. And then we will want to be able to differentiate primary versus secondary tumor. Uh, the way we do this is because in CT and MR, we see more than just the heart. We usually see the mediastinum, the surrounding structures. So if there is a primary mass outside of the heart, we usually can see it quite well. And then if we can, we'll try to differentiate malignant versus benign tumor. And if we can, we'll try to differentiate tumor type. But I think these two entities are going to be pretty difficult unless they are classic presentation of a typical benign tumor, then we can say it that way. Otherwise, the patient will either need additional imaging such as PET or a biopsy to prove the tumor type. Finally, we use the CT and MRI to evaluate any interference by the mass onto the cardiac functions. That will differentiate how extensive the surgical resection might need to be and how urgent the surgery needs to be performed. Now, because there's just so much material, I include for you here a uh, reference list. Um, as someone who's learning these stuff, it's never too many pictures to look at just simply because there are so many different types of cardiac tumors and each tumor can present in so many different ways. So I list for you a list of um, uh, references, some of them pertain to pediatric applications and some of them pertain to adult disease. So uh, by all means, have a look at them. Thank you.